Hi then, welcome to another insightful and yet another informative episode of AAU Talks on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. And my name is Ajaman Otradako. We're glad that we are bringing you this special one right from the heart of the University of Environment and Sustainable Development, where we're discussing women participation in community development projects. You know, we've had Safitan uh, Asafit of um, advocacies for women and gender equality, basically to contributing to the world's economy and global growth. However, particularly zooming your lesson to Africa, uh, the performance of women participation and community development project has not been so, so, so satisfactory be due to a couple of reasons that I really want to spoil the bit. You may be aware of them, but you know what? I have a special guest with me today on set to help you understand the, the hindrances and the divides which are uh, created these hampers, why women are unable to contribute their best and participate in community development projects. And I'll let you know who she is after this short break. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to AAU Talks on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. And I'm Ajimona Chodako. And before we went into the break earlier, the topic for today is women participation or participation of women in community development projects. And this is part of the series from the University of Environment and Sustainable Development. And my guest for today is the unique um, Dr. Um, Dr. Angela Chewa AEC Ado. Doc, you're welcome to AAU Talks. Thank you very much, Mr. Ajeman. I'm glad for, to have you. For the great opportunity given. Thank great, you. Great. You know, it, it hasn't been a, a good narrative quite this happening when it comes to women, gender equality, and all these advocacy to ensure that women have a good uh, space to contribute to community development. And you know that the issues are a lot, but I believe that you and I will be able to open it up very well for people out out there and viewers to appreciate what the matter is. So let's start, let's start. How has it been so far charting the great course here at the UESD uh, in terms of water resources and sustainable development? Okay, so let me start by adding up to what you have already said about me. Yes, I belong to the School of Sustainable Development, yeah. specifically at the Department of Water Resources and Sustainable Development. Sure. And then as a lecturer, one of my key interests, research interests, mm -hmm. is on community education and development Great. together with gender and development. Great. So talking about women's participation in community development, it is something at heart mm -hmm. that I'm really moved to elaborate on. That's a, very, that's a passionate, um, you know, it's a passionate discussion we'll have here. So just appreciate the passion that uh, Dr. Angela Chewa will be bringing out in the color discussion. So Doug, let's, let's start with the relationship that lies between gender and community development. Has there been a good relationship thus far? Okay, so before I answer that, let me give a little background mm. as far as the two concepts are concerned. Great. That's gender and then community development. Great. So we know that gender is a social construct. That's where society assigns specific roles to males and females. Mm. And this doesn't cut across. It differs from place to place. Now, when we say community development, when a group of people have come together to take collective actions mm. towards addressing their common problems, mm. then that is geared towards what? Developing a community. So now the two, the relation. Gender actually cannot be separated from community development. Mm. As I have already highlighted, it has to do with rules, social rules. So gender rules is a key important issue as far as community development is concerned because it shows us, uh, it leads us to the various impacts and then the power structures that gives privileges and impact on individual lives of males and then females in the society. Mm -hmm. So we can never ignore community development without making reference to gender rules. Mm -hmm. It is key and for any development effort to be achieved at the grassroots level, 
gender roles are key in there and must be integrated holistically. Mm. You know, with a very splendid submission over there, you know, one would say, if you mention gender roles then, then gender roles, basically what we know from many, many years ago is that it's imbalanced, it's quite skewed, where one part of the gender circle has higher in terms of contribution to the other gender. I wouldn't want to mention, but with your experience of what you gathered, what has been the pre, I would say, the colonial uh, yeah. gender role and today what we have located, what we've seen yeah. in the airways? Thank you. So we can see that during pre-colonial eras or in the past decades, mm. the women were actually relegated to the background as far as development is concerned. Yeah. So these um, knowledge advances and gender mainstreaming in the 1970s through affirmative actions have actually brought gender roles to a particular point mm. where there has been an advancement. So now if you look at women in the society and specifically to the community development rules, there has been improvement. Mm. But yes, so this improvement does not bring out the equality yeah. as far as male and female rules are concerned. Mm. And then their specific participation levels too are concerned in the development front. Mm. But why should we consider gender uh, as a key proponent in community development? I know you defined it, that yeah. these two have a relationship, but there's still a quest to find out why. Great, that's interesting. So you see that both males and females are impacted by uh, policies and projects differently. Mm. Males experience things differently, females also experience it, it differently. Yeah. And likewise, naturally, there are different roles assigned. Different roles are assigned by society, but nature also has a way of uh, supporting these rules. Yeah. So in this vein, if community projects are to be excelled or are to be promoted, then the two, uh, both males and females, we must view it from both perspective. Yeah. So that in that way, the special interests and distinct roles of both males and females will be brought to bear as far as specific projects are concerned. And then coming to think of it, most of, most of the projects for communities, especially rural communities, are mostly geared towards addressing women's specific problem. Yeah. Though it's a common good of the entire community, but women stands to benefit more. So then it becomes a great deal when these women who focus, who are the main focus of these development projects are left out mm -hmm. or are relegated to the background. Mm -hmm. So talking about projects, projects do have cycles. So probably in our discussion, we'll discuss further to know the various levels and then the various cycles of development, how women are playing there yeah. and how is their role being significant mm. as far as projects of communities are concerned. So, you know, what we are talking about is women participation and community development projects. And mm. one would ask, you know, looking at women and how delicate they are, well, well, to what extent would women's contribution be to community development? What is the importance thereof in there? Okay. Um, Nelson Mandela once mentioned that gender equality is a goal in itself and also a precondition to addressing um, issues of poverty and then political challenges and among others. Mm -hmm. I will personally add that gender equality is also a precondition and a factor to ensuring sustainable development mm -hmm. or sustainable community projects. Mm -hmm. Why do I say this? Now, when projects are to be conducted or carried out in communities with all beneficiaries, and beneficiaries here refer to members of the community, mm -hmm. and we know women are corporate part of the community, that's notwithstanding, they have special interests and then significant responsibilities that cannot be left out. So then, then bringing these women to bear on this these projects brings out their specific roles and also enables them own projects and then contribute towards its management mm -hmm. in the same way as any of us will always own and be part of a decision or projects that we are part of. In the same way, if all members of the community, most especially those who are excluded, women and children, are all involved at equal levels, 
then it, it will be for the betterment of the project mm. and then the sustainability of it. You know, let's, let's also look at uh, the role of women in society, basically. Okay. It, it, it occurs to, to me that women have a pre-assigned role yeah. that is cast in stone. And now, you know, the advocacy is that, well, we could, have, we could expand those roles, we could diversify those roles. Yes. What has been the pre-assigned roles that we have known from the early stages and now the new uh, events of uh, diversified roles of women? Okay, so previously, or let me say, women roles cut across very significant ones, and they cut across the uh, areas of politics, economic, social-wise, and even religious aspects. One of the primary goals of women, or roles of women, is their reproductive roles. Mm. Women give birth and also provide caregiving. This is a natural role that is provided. In doing so, they end up supporting and advancing the welfare of their families. Yeah. Now, if we consider decisions on, let's say, um, family diet, women take about 80% of that decision. Mm -hmm. So this is a major role that even in the past was being done. Yeah. But the point is, now, this must move from the families to the communities, to the national, and to the global, mm -hmm. because they must also play their role, mm -hmm. uh, contribute significantly for achievement of global agenda, mm -hmm. especially Agenda 2030, which we all hope to achieve by, by that age. Yeah. You know, interestingly, with the Agenda 2030, which, I mean, we have just barely eight years to uh, realize the impact we've made so far, contributing to the 17 uh, uh, aspirations. Let's, let's look at the factors. What are these lingering factors that, uh, in an, one way or the other, are hampering the participation of women in community development? Okay. So, though, if you cast our mind back to pre- decades ago, where women were not at the forefront of development, mm -hmm. we could see that no much were achieved. But then there has been advancements, and these advancements are much seen in the areas of empowerment and then local governance. Yeah. Now, looking at it from the community development perspective, we still see that these advancements have not yet transcended there, mm -hmm. and much more improvement needs to go there. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how do we do this? Mm -hmm. Development can only take place when people have the requisite knowledge, skills, and attitude, and then they are able to apply it on their environmental resources to transform things to benefit themselves, yeah. that of their communities and then the nation and the globe as a whole. Mm -hmm. So then one of the key things is women access to formal education. Yes, there are empowerment programs here and there, but to what extent has it been able to bridge that disparity as far as male and female are concerned? So a lot more needs to be done if we are to really um, visualize what we yearn to achieve by 2030, mm -hmm. then much more of capacity building, yes. So on the grounds of more capacity building activity to ensure women get the level edge up, stay with us for more on how women can contribute much to community development. We'll be right back. So you welcome back to the all interesting encounter with me and Dr. Angela Chewa, a Seattle uh, lecturer at the Department of Natural Resources and Sustainable Development at the UESD. And we're looking at women's participation in, 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 in community development projects. And you know, this whole stigmatization and all that, marginalizing women to a point where they can't contribute, she's here to give the narrative in its real sense. So we can appreciate that. So Doc, Welcome back on this one. Now, we want to know, we will discuss the factors that hamper women's progress and women's contribution to the communal development project or scene. Now, let's look at the factors that have the tendency to influence women participation in communal development. What are some of these um, very, very fundamental factors that can open the way for women to now gain the edge to contribute? Okay, thank you. Like I said previously, education is key. 
and this is always obtained from empowerment programs. Mm -hmm. Aside that, there should there is the need for legislation or policies that yearn at improving women's role, and then the perception of gender roles. Mm -hmm. If you move to our rural areas, especially in developing parts of Africa of of the world, which Ghana is not excluded, you can see that women are, are, are perceived to be weaker vessels. Or vessels weaker yes. People. And then as such, it transcends in decision making processes. Yeah. So when decisions and planning about projects that even matters most women are concerned, mm -hmm. they are not actually involved by involvement when we talk about participation let's look at it in a deeper sense participation is not just by presence or information but then actively engagement of the women both by presence and also contributing towards whichever decision and design of the project many a times in research that has been conducted recently in rural ghana mm -hmm. it was found out that women in decision making process and then design process mm -hmm. were relegated to the background of apathetics mm -hmm. and as apathetics they have virtually no control of decisions for programs so we realize that many a times development projects are abandoned and left to deteriorate because these women who are much engaged with these projects are not involved, so they don't see the relevance, the need for it. So their active involvement right from the uh, initial stage of projects is important. Mm -hmm. Another finding that was seen was that their level of contribution were mostly high at implementation stage. Okay. And interestingly, even at that point, mm -hmm. their participation level were mere labor, mm -hmm. where they were supplying labor. So you could see that as far as community development projects are concerned, with regard to the development processes, mm -hmm. women play less role or poor roles as far as decision making, planning, um, evaluation of projects are concerned. Mm. Even at the place that they contribute more, mm. their participation is not active. So then a lot more needs to be done on their capacity building. More so, um, uh, resources must be provided mm -hmm. adequately for them. Mm -hmm. Now, development cannot take place without the provision of basic resources. Yeah. Men in our society, in Ghana, as I speak, is highly patriarchal in nature. So men owe lands and owe major resources that are yearned for development. The question is, what should women depend on to develop? Mm -hmm. Even they are roles, they are productive roles in the farm. Now, if you look at agriculture, mm -hmm. Globally, women are playing a key role there. Yeah. It's about 43%. Yeah. Now in Africa, 80% of farming, which is in the rural communities by smallholder farmers, women constitute a greater percent sure. of it. But in most of these cases, they don't own the land. Mm. So the question is, to what extent could their roles be visualized? Mm. Could what extent would their whole aspirations will be integrated in the project? Yeah. And the key thing, as I mentioned earlier on, is we should not look at the women as uh, individuals, but then the entire community, because um, providing them with the capacity and then the adequate resources mm -hmm. provide uh, efforts for the community to what develop in advance. Mm -hmm. But then limiting it or then putting them behind also aims at what limiting the development efforts of the community. Mm -hmm. And also the little projects that may happen in the communities mm -hmm. will not be owned. We know our men, they are actively engaged by the yeah. question of maintenance. Women by nature are, are meant to maintain yeah. and their roles engages them to maintain. So that is key and should be factored. Mm. You know, considering lots of empirical thoughts um, have really defended the point that women, I mean, un underpinned by lots of, of uh, things you mentioned about patriarchal systems yeah. and lack of opportunities ha have been the reason why women are able to contribute that much to these projects. However, there are some other barriers that we experience in the 21st century. Surprisingly, we shouldn't be so. But now we seem to face much challenge trying to reduce these barriers or break these barriers of women to feel that they are also contributing firsthand in the prime circle of community development. What, in some of your view, have you gathered on the ground throughout your period of community engagement to, to assess realistically 
what are the barriers of uh, facing women in the first century against the, the contribution? Okay, so a major factor is the cultural factors, mm. like I earlier mentioned. So culturally, how are women seen in the communities? How are their roles seen? What is the perception on their roles? Some time ago in 2012, a study conducted showed that mm -hmm. the uh, people perceived in rural communities that the intelligence level of women are actually low. Mm. So for that reason, they can't be integrated in decision-making processes. Mm. So that leads to why they are left out. So going forward, we are still experiencing this because of the wrong notion, the perception that is held out there. Now we are gender advancements and then advocacy groups are still ongoing. But the question is at the grassroots, mm -hmm. what is happening there? How do they see it? And then for the women themselves, culture, culture has perpetuated them to also see themselves in that yard where they find themselves to be enveloped, like whatever it is to bridge the limit to move forward. So in 21st century, women should take um, opportunity, any opportunity given them, they should take it and then explore for the whole world to know the significant roles they play and how it inculcates on development processes. Mm. So that is one. And then looking, I, I mentioned of culture, and then looking at policy wise, yes, there are uh, affirmative actions, but the question is in spite of all this, there is still that disparity. Mm. So we need um, an interesting and then uh, other innovative strategies. Mm. But I think most of these things are being done at the neglect of the women themselves. Yeah. Many a times research and these advocacy groups sit somewhere and then design whatever it is for the women. Mm. So it's high a long time. We go to the women, get to them, know their weakness, know what is intimidating them, whatever it is that they think could be what um, worked on to uh, prevent the bias or the barriers that is preventing them to work mm. or be at par with the male. Interestingly, on these barriers and how they are able to affect women participation, how have we been able to neutralize these um, barriers in terms of the contribution of higher education, providing skill and mainstream education for them to stand tall and contribute? Higher education's role. Yes. In terms of higher education, a lot has been done. Um, if you look at our universities, some of the affirmative actions giving advantage to the female gender, sometimes the cutoff points are being raised for women, for them to take advantage. So you see that now, compared to the past decades, the accessibility is not much of a problem. But then there's still a gap. Mm -hmm. So we need innovative ways. Yes, they are coming on board, but how do we sustain them? We still have a greater percent of women in the informal sector. So how do we get them on board for them to also take part in the formal sector activities? Because it appears most of the measurements and then these um, uh, indices are being measured in the formal sector to the neglect of the uh, informal sector mm -hmm. where the women dominate so much. Mm -hmm. So higher education has seen advancement, yes, access, but there's still much to be done. A lot has to be done. That is making now STEM has been introduced, yeah. yes. But the question is to what extent is it being what? implemented in a higher education institution. Mm. The notion, the conception already in the society, the stereotypes are still being transcended in this forefront. Mm. So despite the achievement, there is still that kind of disparity. So a lot more of innovative strategies needs to be put in place mm. to help bridge that. You know, the African continent has done has not done so well, but quite a base model with our outputs on providing a level ground for women's com contribution to uh, community development. However, in the course of trying to neutralize this narrative and given it the, the other um, outlook, we find that traditional, traditional wise, um, cultural wise, these are some factors that we have not been able to do so well with. What is, how has been the interaction with community leaders community custodian leaders and higher education to try and then change the narrative since they are the, the laws of the community 
in giving women the, 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 the figurehead funds. Great. So you will see that in most of our higher education institutions, yes, things are changing, but a lot needs to be done. You could see that much is done on theories. Now, we need to move the theories out to the community level. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have studied concepts on community, as change agents and all that. But then students must go to the field to um, uh, educate or serve as change agents to the community members. Mm. So the question is, how does the universities bridge the gap between theories and practice? And this is a significant role that in recent times can be done. So for instance, if you look at our university, mm -hmm. a lot of efforts are being made to integrate community activities into the university. So you, you see that in some of our courses, for instance, community development, it has been structured in such a way that the students go to the field, engage themselves with opinion leaders, stakeholders, know what is out there, and then design programs mm -hmm. that is earmarked towards improving whichever challenge they have identified in their community. More so, there are some individuals who are well equipped in their communities from their constant practices. They may not have the formal education as mm -hmm. we know, mm -hmm. But from their experiences, they have gathered a number of experiences that could be shared. So efforts should be made to bring these people to the classroom to engage the students on what is happening there. Mm -hmm. So that that bridge there, there, there is a bridge between theory and then what is happening there. So at the end of the day, when students graduate and they go back home, they are able to identify their own community neighborhood problems mm -hmm. and then help them to address. So as the name implies, change agents. Any student of community development is a change agent, right. and it doesn't end at the classroom, it should end at the community level. Great. And this should be brought to bear. Great, great. Well, wonderful insights gathered so far on, on how women can also rise to their feet with the community level. But you know, you have done quite a number of community engagement and the studying, yeah. and also gathered some insights. Uh, what has been some of your very compelling findings? with regards to women being led back and you know some of these findings are quite shocking and revealing share with us some of these findings and let's see perhaps who's behind these menaces okay so in my engagement with some groups of community um, women especially in the northern part of ghana mm -hmm. i realized that most community projects market centers, schools, and some interesting projects have been abandoned mm. and left to deteriorate. That caught my attention. Mm. So I drew closer to the community members, not only the women, but the men also, to know what had transpired during the uh, development of those projects. And then I gathered that the women or the beneficiaries, not all of them were actively engaged in the field. So then it happens to be whoever is engaged right from beginning to the end, it is your project. Mm. So then, or it is the project of intervention, okay. agencies that help to provide it. So then the, the women or the community members themselves all together do not own the project as it's supposed to be. So the moment the project ends, it is left and abandoned. Mm. So in one community, I, I visited in the more areas. Interestingly, a, a well-finished market center was just abandoned with the women under trees mm. selling there. So after quite a number of interactions, they mentioned that where the market was built was actually a, an abandoned cemetery in the olden days. Mm. So they don't see why they should market at such a place. Mm -hmm. But the point is that if at the initial stage of the decision and then planning stage, mm -hmm. these women were actively engaged on this, I don't think it would have reached that sense. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things out there, but because the women do not own it, they don't feel part of it. Many a times it is the opinion leaders who, though we may have some queen mothers who are part, but it is minimal compared to their uh, counterpart, their male counterparts mm -hmm. who dominate most of this. So projects are actually left to just go waste. Mm. And that is what we are facing now. Mm. Let's, let's wrap out with um, the issue of some very critical happenings that we find around us that advocates have not been able to break them loose. For example, with the 
women come that the, the northern part of Ghana as witches and being molested and being treated poorly because they are women. You have no man living there, but you have only women who are being sent there as a witch camp. And all these very the, the belligerent uh, practices that are reducing the value of women has also a contribution towards the value of women towards the planning table and even yeah. with, with the practice point. Have these things been well looked at how women can break these cages and how they can contribute to reduce women's contribution? Yes, um, day in, day out. In fact, from the 1970s to date, deliberate efforts are being made. Advocacy groups have been formed and they are working, but still the problem is existing. So the point is, what is the core of this? What I sit behind and see is that many a times these measures do not factor so much well integrating whoever is in concern. The point is, if I have a problem and you want to help me out, you cannot design it in the way you see it to be best, but rather from my own perspective. Yeah. Whether I view it wrongly or not, come closer to me, know my perspective now after assessing it as a change agent, you now realize probably I like the necessary capacity to visualize what is out there and what I have to do so that you give me the requisite knowledge, skills and attitude to help raise whoever is there. So yes, perception is also key. Now, though some of these practices have been abolished, but yes, it is in the minds of people yeah. and people are still perpetuating it, especially the men in some communities are still perpetuating it. So how do we get rid of these stereotypes and how do we redefine gender roles in such a way that the women's role is not only relegated to um, reproductive issues or home or family issues. Though these have been advanced, mm -hmm. but in practice we still see it. So how do you get it abolished? And it is through each and everybody's role. We find ourselves in our homes as mothers, as uh, sisters, as husbands. The way we conscientize our children right from the infancy, ch um, girl child are made to play with idols, mm -hmm. giving them a skill of braiding. Then the male child are made to play football and all that. Mm -hmm. But at this level, biases must be broken. Yeah. There must be that equal level. Give them the equal platform. So it begins with our respective home. And the homes are the basic institution. Now the educational institution also plays a role. Mm -hmm. How are our teachers, higher education teachers, how are they integrating all this into their curriculum? How do they assign roles? How do they spell out these gender roles? And then additionally, you could see that these advocates groups, some of them may, from their personal experience, may be implementing programs and yet cannot put their own biases aside mm -hmm. and then let the people feel the relevance of gender um, equality. But then from their own biases, they may spell out in such a way that the value for which has to be achieved is lost. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, people lose their interest. At the higher education level, mm -hmm. most men or uh, gentlemen do not like taking gender courses because they will tell you, why should I go mm -hmm. to, to um, pursue this course for women to fight me? Why should I contribute to the support of women fighting us? But that shouldn't be the case. If our ultimate goal is to achieve sustainable development, then equal opportunity must be given. Why don't we give that equal platform for each and everybody, being it male or female, to contribute their quota to the uh, nation and then global building great. so that collectively we all achieve our goals. Great, great, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Angela Chawa, AEC Ado, for your great insights that you share with us on community uh, development and how women can participate fully to push it to the next level. You know, it is very important that we all play our roles from our various points of service to ensure that women have a very good point of service in terms of community development because the global sustainability of our development depends much on women participation. Thank you very much for your time on the show and thank you so much, Doc, for your time as well. Have a nice time, be safe and keep watching AATV as we bring content that informally transform. See you next time. Have a nice day and bye.